So as I said before, my name is Richard Preuss. I am the Associate Director for the PT program. Suzanne Mack is uh, there as well with her camera on, who is the Associate Director for the OT program. And make sure I can advance here. There we go. Um, before I dive into anything, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the programs. So if you actually go to the school's website, which if you just put McGill School of Physical and Occupational Therapy into a search engine or just McGill Occupational Therapy, McGill Physical Therapy, or McGill SPOT, so School of Physical and Occupational Therapy, uh, you will find us right away. So that link right there, the programs link, is where most of the uh, important information in terms of understanding how the programs run will be found. And I'm going to be taking you through a few of the links in that programs tab today. Uh, before we do that, though, whoops, went too fast. There we go. A uh, quick overview. So I will spend a little bit of time talking about the program structure and some of the courses. We won't get into that too, too much. I'll just show you a quick overview of the courses you would be taking in the first year of the OT and PT programs. Uh, we'll go through a couple of the highlights and the opportunities that are available for you in our programs as well as at McGill University and talk a little bit about how our program is different from other Canadian and Quebec programs because it is unique in the way that the program is structured and particularly in the fact that there's two entry points into our master's programs. So we'll start with the curriculum and we had to put this in there because this lovely little diagram is just beautiful but there's no other information on that slide. So uh, for the curriculum itself, there are, for those of you who are joining us today, two degrees that you'll be interested in. So the bachelor's degree as well as the master's degree. So you'll be starting in either the bachelor's of science in rehabilitation science, with a major in occupational therapy or major in physical therapy. And then once you've graduated from that, you will move on into the master of science applied in occupational therapy or physical therapy. The bachelor's program has six semesters total. Um, so you'll be studying during the fall and the winter terms for three years, uh, which means that after your first year and after your second year, you will have the summer off to either work, um, try to get involved in research if that's something that interests you or do whatever you know, your heart desires for those four months. Um, at the end of the bachelor's degree, so at the end of that third winter term, you will essentially dive right into the master's degree. So if you look at the master's degree down here, you'll see that there's five consecutive semesters, which begin the summer immediately following completion of the bachelor's degree. So the M1 year, that first year of that master's involves a summer, a fall and a winter term. And the M2 year involves the following summer and fall. So you essentially have five semesters consecutive with no breaks. Now I say no breaks, it doesn't mean we don't give you any time off. There's clearly a couple of weeks off at the end of the um, fall semester. And you usually have a little bit of a break between the end of the winter semester and the summer semester as well. And during the summer, there's always a little bit of a break in there as well. Um, and the reason for the break in the summer is it because in this summer term here of M1, you're actually doing two clinical placements. So there's always a break between those two placements. And then in the summer term here, you'll be working on a research project. Uh, but during that summer, you are entitled to two weeks off during the research project, which you'll coordinate with the other people involved in the project so that everything runs smoothly. Um, having mentioned now that during this summer, you will be doing clinical placements. There are a total of four clinical placements during the master's program. Two of them are done in that first summer term. One of them is done in the winter term of M1, but you also have some courses in that semester. So that semester is sort of divided in two with a clinical placement at the beginning, followed by a period of coursework. And then the final clinical placement is in this fall term of the M2 year. So that essentially takes you through those four clinical placements, which will give you a little bit over a thousand hours of clinical experience before you graduate and move out into the workplace. And of course, it is a completion of these masters of science degrees that are required to actually work as an occupational therapist or a physical therapist in Canada. Um, when you graduate from those programs, you will be eligible for licensure in Quebec. Um, if you want to go and work in another province though, you will likely have to write what's called the uh, professional competency exam, um, which are run at 
various different, so there, there are slightly different requirements at different provincial levels, but most provinces outside Quebec require this licensing exam from a licensing board for occupational therapy and another licensing board from physical therapy. Uh, but you will learn more about that during your degrees. Um, just to give you a bit of an overview of the, of the curriculum itself. Um, so once you've gone into that program tab that I showed you on the second slide, you will see something that looks like this. So if you click on occupational therapy and then click on curriculum, you will see this. And then if you click on physical therapy program and curriculum, you will see that. And you'll notice that they look pretty similar. So I'll go back up to the OT1. And you'll notice that in this curriculum page, there are tabs for U1, U2, U3, QY, and I'll explain a bit more about that in just a second. Um, M1, M2, and then they have a special tab for indigenous topics. But if you actually look at the coursework, it is identical in that first year, in that U1 year for the OT and PT programs. In the second year, things start to diverge a little bit. And in the third year, the programs are completely separated. But in that first year, the fall semester has an anatomy course. So clinical human musculoskeletal anatomy. You have a mammalian physiology course, an introduction to professional practice course, and an introduction to statistics for OT and PT, plus one complementary course. In the winter, you will have another anatomy course, but this one is a visceral anatomy course. You'll have another physiology course, which is essentially a follow-up to the first one. You will have uh, an introduction to biomechanics course, which is specifically tailored for rehabilitation science students, and a second introduction to professional practice course. So those intro to professional practice courses really are your main link to the physical and occupational therapy professionals, or professional programs, in this first year, whereas the other courses really are those foundational call, uh, courses that you're going to need in order to understand the things you'll be learning later on in your more hands-on clinical courses. Uh, and then there's also a complementary course in this winter term. And you'll notice we've put Psych 305, Statistics for Experimental Design there. That is because that course is, well, technically a complementary course is actually required for the students in both programs. The vast majority of our students take this course as their complementary in the winter term. If for whatever reason, you don't end up taking the course in that term, it can be taken in other terms, including as a summer course. Uh, but we do recommend that you try to get that course done um, in that winter term if you can, largely because uh, enrollment is somewhat limited for it. So we do try to make sure that we make sure all our students get that done because it has to be done before you, the end of the second year, so the, the end of U2. All right, moving on then, uh, just a couple of the highlights and some of the opportunities for our programs. So the first, of course, is supportive and knowledgeable professors, and I say of course because you know, I like to toot my own horn sometimes, uh, but our instructors are a mix of clinicians and researchers, and some of them do both. Some of them do both research and clinical work, and what that means is that in our courses, you will make sure that you are learning sort of the, the most evidence-based, and up-to-date evidence-based um, information, but it's also being taught to you uh, in a clinical, me clinically meaningful way. So by having clinicians involved, you will hear those anecdotes about those specific events that may have happened in clinical practice. You will make sure the information you are learning is relevant to your future clinical work. We have quite a few innovative course activities, and that includes act activities at the Medical Simulation Center at McGill. Um, many of our exams, were, which are referred to as OSCEs, which are essentially um, clinical exams which simulate actual clinical encounters with patients, are done there. There's also a variety of other learning and formative um, uh, sessions that you will have at the Simulation Center. Another one worth mentioning is the HELP program, which stands for Hospital Elder Life Program. And that's something that you'll be involved in, if I just scroll back here, I believe in the Intro to Professional Practice 2 course. So that's POTH 250 here. Um, and that is a program at the Jewish General Hospital, which essentially involves volunteers, or in your, in your case, student volunteers, coming in and actually working with the elderly patients in the hospital in a variety of different contexts. You won't actually be doing clinical work, but you will definitely get to see 
assuming that we are in person by the time we get there. Um, you'll actually get to see likely some PTs and OTs interacting with the patients, but you're there largely to learn just the basic interaction, to work on some of your communication skills, and just learn to interact with the patient in a clinical environment. Um, other things that should be mentioned as well, some of the interesting field work opportunities that we have. And when I say field work, I'm talking about those clinical placements you have to do in the M1 and M2 year. Uh, we do have availabilities for placements in Cree communities up north. Uh, there is the possibility of doing a clinical placement internationally. Uh, that is generally done as the third clinical placement, so the one in the winter term of M1. Uh, so there are a variety of opportunities there. If that's something that interests you in international placement, it's something you do want to start organizing very early on. But again, don't worry, there are sessions that we put in place well ahead of the time you need to actually organize this to make sure that you have all of the information you need. So you don't need to think about that just yet. Uh, the Occupational Therapy Program also has a mentoring program that's been in place for a few years now where the students are actually matched with occupational therapy clinicians to actually get a little bit of interaction in terms of more mentoring towards you know what your future clinical work will look like. The physical pro therapy program does not have an official program like that. I'll say yet because we've been sort of mulling it over, but uh, the OTs are just ahead of us on that one. It's not much more I can say. Um, and then of course there's the possibility to get active and engaged in various student associations. So the two students who are with us today are our PTU1 reps on the uh, POTUS Council which is the Physical and Occupational Therapy Undergraduate Society. And then there is a sort of sister organization called SPOT GSA, which is the same student organization, but for the graduate students. All right, then. And then the last thing I said we were gonna talk about is how are we different from other Canadian and Quebec universities? So probably the biggest difference is that we are the only program in Canada that offers two points of admission. So I'm gonna quickly scroll back here to this U3QY tab, which I said I was gonna talk about again. That, the reason that that is U3 and QY is the QY refers to qualifying year. Our qualifying year students are students who already have a bachelor's degree and have been admitted into a qualifying year for the master's program. So they essentially will join you in your third year the undergraduate program where you're doing most of those hands-on really directly clinically related courses and then we'll continue on through the M1 and M2 years with you. Usually our QY group makes up about 40 students in each class um, whereas our undergraduate group is a slightly larger group. The balance is a little bit different depending on the year. Sometimes it can be as small as 30 for the QI, sometimes it can be as high as 40, but the QI group is generally a slightly smaller cohort but it does add sort of a, a depth of knowledge in terms of the student experience at that point in the program because these are students coming from many different programs. We've had students from kinesiology, we've had students from biology, anatomy, we've had students from music, we've had students from dance programs. So it does add a bit of a depth in terms of the types of interactions you'll have with your peers once you get to that third year of the program. Yeah. So that was not my last slide. Um, then the last thing that we wanna mention is some of the other resources that are available to you as students. And these are resources that are available either directly through the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. Um, and yes, the faculty has officially changed its name now. It is no longer just the Faculty of Medicine. It is the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences because it does sort of cover medicine, PT and OT, uh, nursing, um, speech and language, uh, I think that's all. <laughs> I hope that's all. I shouldn't be forgetting any. Uh, but in terms of those resources, so one that is directly available through the faculty is the Well Office. And this is an initiative that's been around for a few years, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is an office that is dedicated to the wellness of our students. So this office provides a wide range of different um, activities and support systems. So help with um, you know, organization, help with mental health, help with trying to manage stress, which it's unfortunate, but yes, in university, things can quite get quite stressful for many students. So having this type of a resource, you know, including things like ice cream rounds, although I'm not sure when the last time we were actually able to give ice cream out uh, happened, 
but it does allow for that sort of immediate and, and quickly accessible support that our students can benefit from directly through the faculty. And there are a couple of dedicated um, people in the office who are actually working specifically with the School of Physical and Occupational Therapy. And then there's a whole range of other things that are also available through McGill. A couple of things worth highlighting. First, People's House, which provides academic support and a variety of other support services to Indigenous students on campus. Um, office for Students with Disabilities, which is essentially an office that uh, helps to arrange for any extra help or any extra accommodations that may be required if you do have a diagnosed disability. And this can be things like extra time on exams, um, you know, a special uh, location to write exams if you need to use a computer to write your exams, for example. Again, any accommodations that can be or that need to be provided based on a diagnosed disability, uh, you'll be going through the office for students with disabilities. And then, of course, you can see there's a lot of other things there as well. Um, in addition to First People's House, uh, another initiative that has been going for a couple of years now is the Indigenous Health Professions Program. Um, and this sort of touches on a, a wide range of things, but largely what it is intended to do is to try to increase the number of Indigenous students that we have in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. So both PT and OT programs are involved with this initiative. Uh, we're involved with things like uh, outreach for kids in um, high school. I guess it is technically high school, so Sec 1, Sec 2 in Quebec. Uh, so that junior high, high school age, depending on which province you're looking at. Um, it's also involved in trying to provide extra support to those students once they've actually come into our programs. So again, if this is something that you're interested in looking at, the website is quite easy to find. Uh, there is also a relatively new Office for Social Accountability and Community Engagement, or referred to as the SACE office, uh, which provides slightly as, maybe not exactly the same services as the IHPP, but is essentially there to try to encourage diversity within our student population, to try to provide support for, um, for students coming from diff different ethnic backgrounds, uh, but really is trying to make sure that McGill is providing the same degree of support and the same degree of services to students regardless of their background. And part of that SACE office's um, initiatives right now is the action plan to address anti-Black racism. So this is something that has sort of been gradually developed about over the last year or so, um, and it is sort of being implemented in various different steps. Uh, if you're interested in knowing more about that, there's a, a fairly lengthy PDF document that is more or less going through all of the various different things that are uh, being put in place to try to address anti-Black racism. And again, just to make sure that everyone who comes to McGill feels welcome and is receiving all of the support that they need. 